Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi ta'ala wabarakatuh and good morning. I am Dr. Sabah Bau from the Physics Section, Pusat Pengajian Pendidikan Jarak Jauh University Science Malaysia. This is course JIF318, Quantum Mechanics. We are in Chapter 4, Solutions of One-Dimensional Time-Independent Schrodinger Equation. Di this segment, Unit 24.8, we are in Bound States. Today, we will be discussing harmonic oscillator potentials. The objective of this segment is basically for you to be able to describe the usage of Schrodinger equation to describe the motion of a particle undergoing small oscillations or vibrations. Okay, a potential with a more physical significance because this os harmonic oscillator potential describes the vibration of particles. And we, in physics, uh, will find that most atoms or particles or nucleus or electrons in, in matter basically vibrates. Okay? Even in solids, you can find that uh, the particles inside solid, even though they might not be able to move from one place to one place because of the solid a, a state of the material but vibration do occur uh, in the particles okay let's look at a one dimensional harmonic oscillator potential is if you remember in classical mechanics okay we have the potential equal to uh, potential energy equal to half kx squared okay so it is from classical mechanics of an ideal spring if you uh, recall back that we have the restoring force for a spring for example equal to negative k x where k is the spring constant okay but f according to newton's law is ma or m d to x per dt squared d to x per dt squared is basically a or acceleration okay so it is uh, m d to x per dt uh, d to x per dt squared equal to negative kx. This is the uh, spring force, force or restoring force. And of course, the oscillation will obey uh, the wave equation x equal to a cosine omega t, where a is the amplitude of the oscillation or vibration. And if you differentiate that to get the velocity of the oscillation, it is equal to negative a omega sine omega t by uh, differentiating uh, x dx per dt you get b and the total energy is actually a combination of kinetic energy and potential energy kinetic energy is half mv squared while the potential energy is half kx squared and this is equal to the uh, maximum potential energy half k a squared where a is the amplitude of the oscillation why this, this potential that means the harmonic oscillator potential will be of any interest at all why we need to, to know them the answer is that an excellent approximation to the motion of particle undergoing small oscillation about the minimum of any potential okay not only in spring but example motion of ions in a crystal lattice uh, if you study solid state physics, then you have this crystal lattice, then the uh, ions or the particles inside the crystal lattice, even though it, they cannot have translational motion, but uh, they have vibrational motion or oscillation. Consider an arbitrary potential Vx with its minimum at the origin of the axis. Consider a particle trapped near the minimum of the potential at x equal to 0. Okay. The potential near the origin can be approximated as a Taylor series. So, the potential x equal to potential at 0 and plus v prime here actually is dv per dx uh, multiplied by x. Then you have the v double prime x squared plus v triple prime multiplied by x cube plus and so and so forth. So this is the Taylor series for the potential. Okay. 
The first term of this series is a constant and can be ignored. The first term here is a constant. So it does not play so much role in describing the vibration of the particle. Okay. The second term is zero as the minimum of the potential lies at x and uh, x equals to zero. So b prime is equal to zero. It is it looks more or less like this. Okay. The potential energy looks like this. So you can see that at x equal to zero, this x equal to zero, this x, okay. The the potential is zero. And when the potential is zero, okay, the v prime dv per dx is equal to zero too. Because to uh, if you remember in our additional mathematics, the minimum or maximum point of a curve is zero. So dv per dx is actually the gradient at that position. So that's why at x equal to zero, v prime is equal to zero. Okay, you, you recall back in mathematics, if anything you put as prime here, y prime, it means uh, dy per dx, okay? Short form of uh, differentiation of y. Okay, so here if you have a b prime, that's mean db per dx. You have v double prime, that's mean d to v per dx squared, and so on and so forth. Okay, so at x equal to zero, where the uh, the, the potential is minimum, that's mean at the minimum point. So db per dx should be zero. That means the second term here also zero. This is equal to zero. This leave only term proportional to x squared and higher. But if x is sufficiently small, then x squared must be greater, much greater than x cubed, much greater than x4, much greater than... Basically, this one is constant. This one is zero. And if, if x is sufficiently small, this is zero, this is constant. If x sufficiently small, then the multiple of x, x cube, x to the power of 4, x to the power of 5 and so on, is or are much, much smaller than x squared. So basically, those terms can be negligible we said if x is sufficiently small so what is left from this Taylor series is basically bx is about equal to b double prime x squared so we need to worry about the x squared term only that means out of the Taylor series the term which contain uh, x squared only is relevant here this the approximate potential of a particle Undergoing small oscillation, small oscillation, eh? that means x very small, is equal to half v double prime x squared. Okay? So we have this equation. But from the uh, potential uh, energy equation of a spring, for example, and the potential is equal to half k x squared. So we can say that k, the spring constant, is equal to v double prime. Uh, this is not. Uh, this is the classical spring uh, potential energy half k x squared. Okay. So now we have defined or oh, some sort of like uh, the meaning of uh, k. It is actually d to v per d x squared. Okay. Now, in if you use one-dimensional Schrödinger equation, so the potential can be replaced by half k x squared. Uh, this is the time-independent Schrödinger equation. We have b here, but b is can be replaced with half k x squared. So we can rearrange. And what is inside the bracket now is E 
minus half kx squared. It is convenient to define a new independent variable s and a new constant just like in the previous one when we discussed uh, uh, bound and uh, uh, unbound states of uh, particle. Okay. Uh, during that time, we use k and omega to replace uh, all those things. But here, let us use independent variable s and the constant lambda. Okay. To, to account for the terms inside the bracket here, including the coefficient, lah, of course. Okay, if you see that basically, uh, this S and lambda is basically to replace whatever is inside the bracket there. So, in terms of S and lambda, that means the wavelength, the Schrodinger equation simplifies to d2 psi per ds squared plus lambda minus s squared psi equals to 0. So, the second order differential equation. So, if the limit s squared is much, much greater than lambda, okay, the se or the Schrodinger equation look like d2 psi per ds squared minus s squared multiplied by psi equals to 0 where this lambda is very small here you can see much much smaller than s so it is negligible as if you can uh, uh, approximate the Schrodinger equation into just in terms of s no more lambda okay if you look back here s squared here it says that if s squared s squared much much larger than lambda S squared here depends on Km in order to make it large. Okay, so if the kinetic, uh, the the spring constant is large and the mass is large, as compared to this, that means the energy here E must be low. Okay, then we can have this uh, approximated Schrodinger equation. However, even this simplified version cannot be solved exactly, even though we can bring uh, the second term to the right and lambda bring to the left so that you have uh, uh, integration of inverse lambda and so on and so forth. But with the uh, negative sign here, it is quite, I mean, the, the solution is not uh, cannot be solved exactly. So we have to make an approximate solution. That means, but we can find an approximate solution valid for large S. That means, uh, we can put psi equal to A exponent S squared per 2 plus B exponent, this is exponential solution, general exponential solution where you have the first term positive exponential, the second term negative exponential. So, <coughs> uh, let us assume this is the solution. So, for this solution, if you uh, put into the equation or you differentiate it twice, we have this d2 psi per ds squared because uh, the, the general solution it contains second order differential, so you differentiate twice. You have a 1 plus a squared, uh, so it's not e easy to solve, quite complicated again. And so we assume that s is much, much greater than 1 because in the bracket you can see that uh, 1 plus a squared in the first term and 1 minus a squared in the second term. So if s is much much larger, larger than the one so basically the one inside the brackets uh, can be ignored okay so we have uh, this solution d2 y psi d s squared is about a s squared okay because the one here is negligible exponent s squared per 2 plus b s squared you can see here that one is negligible, so negative and negative, you have positive S squared. And basically, it is equal to 
s squared psi that means the original equation was the uh, the original s approximated equa equation is d to psi per the s squared equal to s squared psi okay however we also want our solution to be well behaved in the limit where s approaching positive or negative infinity this means that a equal to zero okay if s is approaching infinity so for the first term here the exponent will be very large okay if s approaching positive or negative infinity even for negative infinity because we have squared here so the negative infinity you squared it, it become positive so exponent shall positive approaching infinity is a large number so you cannot solve this in terms of determining the and the existence of a particle so the 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 solution will be uh, very large while for the exponential negative you can see that it the the values goes low and vanishes in the sense that basically if you uh, think of a particle you can determine that a particle is existing in one space if exponential is positive that means uh, uh, the, the particle can exist anywhere in space so it, it is not it is more or less meaningless to determine the position for example or the momentum of particle so in order to eliminate the first term we have to make a not a equal to zero that means the, the constant a should be zero so what is left is we, we are left with the uh, second term so the the solution resemble psi equal uh, approximately exponential negative s this is actually the second term okay and uh, of course we have a constant there b but if you are talking about function we can replace the the b with a function s so we have this solution psi in term of s equal to f in term of s then exponential negative s squared per 2 remember that s is basically defined here we, we let s equal to this okay so it depends on s substituting this form for psi and simplifying we get a differential equation for fs that means if we uh, put this psi back into the Schrodinger equation so the for example d to psi per ds squared can be replaced by d to f per ds squared and so on and so forth we have now a uh, second order differential but the we have also uh, first order differential here okay so it is like a quadratic equation now uh, because we have here squared here uh, to the power of one and here is the constant to find a function which satisfies this equation we expand fs out in a power series so fs can be expanded uh, into a summation of a n multiplied by s n where a n is chosen to satisfy the equation above so a n is a value which uh, we need to, to choose so that it can solve this equation substituting uh, the this uh, fs with s n then we are left with this okay in terms of summation rewriting the first term in this equation in terms of m equal to n minus 2 okay we are just replacing the n with m okay so uh, basically n minus 1 is equal to m plus 1 n equal to m plus 2 something like that uh, so that we, we are left with this term okay so we we can simplify it in the sense that in in this equation we have three summation then when we replace uh, uh, we, we put m in instead of n with this definition we have we are left only with two two terms on the left hand side note that m is just a summation label so it is just substitution okay summation label so that it can be changed back to n later 
That means to simplify the mathematical operation, we replace it with M. Because here we have three summation, now we are left with only two. But later, if you want to determine N, we can use this uh, definition to get N back. Okay. In order for this equation to be satisfied, the factor multiplying every power of S is zero. So the factor, in, in order to be satisfied, the factor multiplying the every power of S. So we have here S. So this term and uh, this term should be equal to zero. Okay. Because S itself have values. But this two addition of two summation is equal to zero. Therefore, the first term should be zero. The second term should be zero. But S to the power of M in the first term cannot be zero. It has some values. The same thing with S to the power of N in the second term cannot be zero. So, what must be zero is the uh, multiplier or the coefficient, should I say, m plus 2, m plus 1, multiplied by a, m plus 2, and uh, lambda minus 2, and negative 1, and so and so forth. So, the, the multiplier or the coefficient of s should be zero. So, that when this is zero, zero multiplied by s m is zero, zero multiplied by s n is also zero, zero plus zero is equal to Zero. So, in order to to satisfy that equation, the factor multiplying every power of s, that means s to the power of m and s to the power of n should be zero. So, this is this uh, should be zero. n plus two multiplied by n plus one multiplied by a uh, subscript n plus one plus lambda minus two n minus one multiplied by a subscript n must be zero. So, if you rearrange, you get this. Solution. You get the solution of a n plus n two in terms of a n. Well, the the multiplier here contains n and lambda. Okay. So this uh, relationship between a subscript n plus one and a subscript n can be used to fix a subscript n in terms of n plus 2 in terms of a subscript n. This is called recursion formula. Okay? So, recursion formula, that means it, the, the formula can be repeated in terms of when you put in the values, you can repeatedly uh, 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 use this formula to, to increasing values or decreasing values. So, it can be iterated to calculate all of the other terms in the power series. It is just like a computer program. For example, uh, in order to have a repeated flowchart or a, a repeated process, you put i equal to i plus 1, for example. That means every time you add i, then the second, the, the, the next i will be plus 1. That means i plus 1. So, this is an iteration uh, process. The same thing here, you can basically iterate it to calculate, you, use, you can use computer to calculate the next value of A. Okay. The power series must terminate at some finite value of N. Of course, when you increase the value of N, it will go on and on and on. But it should terminate at some point in your iteration or calculation. Consider what happens if we set Lambda equal to 2 n plus 1 for some fixed value of n. To obtain a finite polynomial, you must choose a1 equal to 0 so that all of the odd numbered terms, uh, terms are 0. So, for uh, a1 equal to 0 so that the other, when you, you repeatedly calculate it, the odd numbered terms are 0. Conversely, if we take n to be odd, then a not and all, and all of the other even number term must vanish. So, in, in, if you take a1 equal to 0, that means n equal to 1, then a0 and all the other must vanish. That means uh, 
a1 a0 vanish lah and all of the other even number term must vanish that means other even number term must vanish too so what we have basically for different values of n using the uh, expression we obtain for for a if n equal to 0 then psi naught that means the wave function psi naught in term of s is c naught exponent exponential negative s squared per 2 and one we have this value n2 n3 basically for different n values and all these are called hermit hermite uh, polynomial polynomials that means we have wave function in terms of s okay and s is s defined before this we substitute certain values with s okay the constant cn must be fixed to normalize the wave function the normalization condition gave these values okay cn equal to 1 over pi to the power of 1 over 4 square root 2 to the power of n then factorial n and as expected the wave function are alternately even and odd since the potential is metric about x equal to 0 so the wave function are alternately even and odd here when we put in cn with that okay so the, the to visualize the uh, wave function okay which we have this hermite hermi polynomials the harmonic oscillator wave function for the lowest four energy state n equal to zero one two three and this is the definition for s okay the hermite polynomial is in term of s so when you plot it in a graph of uh, wave function against s uh, we have this this is for n equal to zero then we have the way the shape of the curve look like this for n equal to one and uh, n equal to two we have this and n equals to three we have this okay uh, in terms of qualitative uh, analysis for example n equal to zero means that the curve does not cut the, x, the s axis at all if n equal to one it cuts only one and n equal to two the curve cuts s axis twice then if n equal to three it cuts the s axis thrice or three times okay this uh, qualitative uh, analysis by looking at the plot of the wave function with respect to s now let us look at the energies the energies corresponding to this wave function so we have this lambda this is the uh, substitution we put in earlier lambda equal to 2 per h bar square root m per k multiplied by e this is equal to 2 n plus 1 so you rearrange so that e on the left hand side so we have e n equal to n plus half h bar square root k per m okay now you can see that n are integer n is integer is an integer 1 2 3 or 0 1 2 3 and so on and so forth that means the the energy is discrete so we put a subscript n after the symbol for energy e and on the right hand side basically h bar square root k per m is actually h bar omega we are familiar with this so e uh, for for harmonic oscillator e equal to n plus half multiplied by h bar omega okay uh, if you remember in in some of the previous segments uh, the energy of particle equal to n h bar omega remember that okay but in harmonic oscillator there is a half here okay uh, from from this uh, mathematical operation which we had done uh, recently 
Once again, we see the permanent of zero point energy. Zero point energy. That means ground state. The lowest energy uh, state, n equal to zero, does not have zero energy. Even though the lowest energy state, n equal to zero, but it, it has some energy. For example, you put n equal to zero, e, e subscript zero equal to nh omega. So, it has some uh, sorry, if you add put n equal to 0, E subscript n equal to half H omega. That means the value for n equal to 0, the energy is not 0. So, we have this figure here. Note that the energy level for the harmonic oscillator are evenly spaced. That means uh, adjacent energy differs by H bar omega. So, it differs. Okay, the first energy n equal to zero is half h omega naught here. Then n one equal to uh, three over two h. That means the with n with different values of n, we can determine the energy with, at that value. This u equal to half k x squared is actually the the potential energy. That means the curve here. So the levels have equal spacing. Here have equal spacing. Eh? between the level the difference is 1 h omega but here it is only half omega the first energy level the distance between the classical turning point increases with energy that means uh, the the classical turning points that means here you can increases with energy that means as it, you go up here the energy increases the quantum probabilities, now we are talking about quantum probabilities, that means psi conjugate multiplied by psi for this wave function is non-zero. It's not zero. In the classical forbidden region where B is greater than E, that means the potential is greater than the energy of the particle, that means the particle can penetrate into a region which classically it, it should not be able to reach. And uh, this is just like when we were talking about uh, step potential, uh, that means the the particle has some probability to penetrate through the forbidden region. And one application of quantum harmonic oscillator is the physics of the di di diatomic molecules. Diatomic molecules that means molecule co containing two atoms. Okay, like this. So this. Atoms vibrate about its uh, lowest energy potential. Both basically are vibrating. So uh, the quantum harmonic oscillator principle can be applied in diatomic molecules. So the quantum probability density for the harmonic oscillator at n equal to 0, 1, 2, 3, and so on and so forth can be uh, uh, seen in the figure. This is uh, psi uh, conjugate multiplied by psi and the horizontal axis is S. So for n equal to 0, you have one bump or one peak here. For n equal to 1, you have two peaks there. That means the, this is the probability density of a particle uh, uh, at different values of energy level n. So, if you have, for example, n equal to 50, so the, the probability density look like this. The solid curve, that means the black line here, the black curve, uh, is the classical probability P. And the dash curve, quantum probability density for n equal to 50, that means in this limit, the QM or quantum mechanics probability approaches the classical result. That means when n is a large number, then it approaches the classical result. The classical result means that uh, the, 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 the data which can be observed from an experiment. That means that here you can see that more or less the, the solid line, the classical curve, is along the center or should I say the mean of the uh, curve, the quantum 
mechanical probability density curves. You can see the curve here, the dash line, go up and down, go up and down, but the mean is actually uh, coincide with the uh, classical probability. As a conclusion, the wave functions obtained for the different values of n are called Hermite polynomials. The energy levels of a harmonic oscillator are evenly spaced. Adjacent energy levels differ by h bar omega. Thank you very much for your attention.